Hello and welcome to SLU Space Camera. I'm Paul Cox. I'm sorry we were 30 seconds late there. We were waiting for my grandfather clock to uh, stop chiming. But anyway, you're joining us for yet another live broadcast here at SLU Space Camera. Now, when we first planned this broadcast, it was to show you some images uh, from the, the observatory uh, that you're seeing some pictures of now of this near-Earth asteroid, and it's named 2005 WK4. All of these astronomical names have got ridiculous names like that. Anyway, it was discovered in 2005, and this thing was 500 meters in diameter, and it was making its closest approach to fly by Earth, and that's what we were going to show. Soon took us. When I started checking, you can see on your screens now, this is a sky chart, and when I started checking uh, to see the orbit of where to point the SLU space telescope cameras to, um, the telescopes to, which by the way you can uh, control those things, I saw this other strange yellow line, and you can see it on this chart, and that was a giveaway. You see that loop? That means that there's an object coming very close to Earth, and the, the, the speed that it was whizzing across the sky kind of raised my attention. Anyway, what this turned out to be was something far more exciting than even the exciting near-Earth asteroid we were going to show you tonight. We've also got pictures of, of this one as well. It was another asteroid, but this time it was making its closest approach to Earth only two days after it was discovered. So the one we were going to show you is this really enormous thing, and we've got some pictures of it coming up on, on the screens now. That was discovered in 2005, so no surprises there. But this one suddenly comes out of nowhere. Within two days, it's making its closest approach to Earth. This thing is passing us, this picture as you see them, um, was passing Earth at 127,000 miles. Now that sounds like a long way, doesn't it? But that's only halfway between the Earth and the Moon. So here we are, this huge chunk of primeval rock from the solar system's formation. We don't know anything about it until a mere two days before it makes this close approach to Earth. But that, you know, when we were planning this show, and what you're seeing now is uh, images of these near-Earth asteroids that we're talking about now. And what you see there is the black image, that's the black sky, and this is the SLU telescopes that are doing this, that SLU members can control. You can also control them actually through the, uh, the SLU space camera iPad app, which is pretty cool. But you're seeing the background stars. Those are the points of, of light there. Those are the white dots, the stars. But the line that you're seeing there, that's the actual near-Earth asteroid. And the reason why it looks like a line is it's moving so fast. These things move incredibly fast in real terms, but their apparent motion, in other words, from the way we see it from Earth, is also incredibly fast. But anyway, look, this wasn't the only surprise that we had this week. Last Sunday, another even larger asteroid was discovered. Now, if an asteroid of that size, if that hit Earth, which that one couldn't do because it wasn't uh, close enough, but if an object of that size hit Earth, it would wipe out a huge, huge area. I mean, it would devastate a city and probably a far larger area. But, you know, the big surprise about that one was not its size, was not that it was discovered on Sunday, but the fact that it was making its closest approach to Earth only 12 or so hours after it was first discovered. So here's another lump of space rock right, that could easily wipe out a city which is only discovered a few hours really before it makes its closest approach to Earth. I mean it really felt as if everybody who knew about that, all of this, this week, it really felt like Earth was in this kind of shooting gallery. But you know, why is it that it's so difficult for us to find these objects. There are so many telescopes pointing to the pointing to the sky. But the problem is what we're seeing now, all right, this is even with a high powered telescope like the SLU half meter telescope, which members use, and this is a member's image actually, of this asteroid 2013 PS13. So this is the one that kind of came out of nowhere this week. Now it's difficult to see the asteroid. You can see all the stars there, but I don't know. If you look really carefully, you will see a really faint line going from the bottom right 
up to the top left of that image, very, very close to that incredibly bright red star. That's what one of these asteroids looks like even when you know where it is. So you point a high-powered telescope to it and it's even it's, it's even then it's so difficult to see. Now we do some things to some of these images, we reverse them, we make them into negatives. Because look, you can see that line a lot, lot clearer now. But even then, it's so easy to miss one of these objects. And these objects, you know, we think of asteroids as being quite bright because when we see them on these images, they're kind of bright white lines when we see them close up, when they're really close to us. But these objects are blacker than coal. That's why it's so difficult. Here's one of the high mag images of this same asteroid that came very, very close to Earth, close at half, half the distance between the Earth and the Moon this week. And there it is. It's just this really faint line. And I have to stress, this is when we know where an object is. You know, so it's pretty damn difficult, I think you'll agree. Um, to, to, uh, to, to, to be able to find some of these objects. But just before we came on air tonight, I saw a post from one of, uh, one of the SLU members, um, and he's helping tonight, in fact, around now, he's helping tonight, he's pointing the SLU space camera telescopes to this new object. It was only discovered last night, and they need observations of it to try and fix its orbit, and as soon as they fix the orbit, they can tell exactly how big it is, or they can roughly tell how big it is. But anyway, listen, I've just told you there that we were totally thrown this week with the show that we had planned, far more interesting things coming up. If you want to learn more about these near-Earth objects, asteroids and comets, don't forget, um, and the threat that they pose to the Earth, then what we're going to do is we're going to start a whole series of bite-sized shows covering this whole subject and a bundle of other fantastic subjects as well. We've got a great series this week starting on Supernovae, uh, so that's going to be a pretty cool one. So keep an eye open on the SLU homepage, on the Twitter feed, on the SLU Facebook page, and you can, you'll can you see when we're going to be putting on all these shows. So I'm going to be doing the near-Earth object shows for you to tell you what all of those are about. Don't forget, the telescopes that you've seen from the images tonight, you can control those either through a SLU membership or you can download the SLU iPad app and you can actually control those same telescopes with the touch of a button. But for tonight, I want to leave you with a quote from author Dave Barry. He's a fantastic, very humorous author. And he poses this question. What happens if a big asteroid hits Earth? And he goes on to say, judging from realistic simulations involving a sledgehammer and a common laboratory frog, we can assume it will be pretty bad. I'm Paul Cox. This has been the SLU Space Camera. Join us soon for some more fantastic live broadcasts. Good night, everybody. Thank you.